Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, we're going to take a look at the brand new Slate Digital Equalizer, the Infinity EQ, and we're going to compare it and pit it up against against FabFilter Pro Q3. So I've been a FabFilter Pro Q user for quite some time. I think I got the first version all the way back in 2010, and I've used each subsequent version since then. So I was really excited to see that Slate was getting into the visual EQ arena, not the you know classic emulation or modeled EQ. So in this video, we're going to look at all the features that the Infinity EQ brings to the table that's not there with the FabFilter with FabFilter Pro Q3, and vice versa. We're going to look at the things that we can do with FabFilter Pro Q3 that we cannot do with the Infinity EQ. Now, the whole point of me making this video is to just give you guys more information about which EQ may be right for you if you have one and not the other. Now, that being said, this is not a sponsored post. This is not a sponsored video. There's no affiliate links involved with me and either of these two companies, Slate Digital and FabFilter. All the ideas, views expressed in this video, they're my own opinion. And I'm like I said, I'm just doing this so you guys get more clarity about the right tool for you and your music. All right, let's open up Logic and get started. All right, so I'm going to switch things up a little bit. Instead of starting out talking about the EQ, talking about the different features, we're going to just start mixing this track with the Infinity EQ. Now, I currently have no equalizers on any track. It's all just presets and samples. Now, speaking of these presets, everything you're about to hear is is from our upcoming free sound set for Anna 2 called Drip. It comes with over 75 presets for trap, hip hop, lo-fi, and you can use them for a bunch of other genres as well. If you guys want us to release that, let us know in the comments. We're pretty much done with it. And if we get enough love and support for it, we'll drop it as soon as tomorrow. All right, so let's check out this demo. Again, no EQ. We're gonna, we're gonna improve the mix using the Infinity EQ. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of mid-side EQ to the master of my mix. Now, to do this, I'm just going to go to the far left-hand side near the low frequencies, double-click to create a low cut, take it out to about 100 hertz. It's usually a good starting point. Now, from there, I'm going to change it to mid-side mode. Actually, scratch that. Let's go back. Let's change the decibel per octave slope. So Infinity EQ has a variable slope, which means you can go anywhere from zero decibels per octave, attenuation all the way up to 120, which is basically a brick wall. Now, most EQs don't give you this option. Most EQs have predetermined slopes like 6, 12, 18, et cetera. So let's take this back to something. Oh, let me do 16 decibels per octave because I've never really done that before. Usually, again, it's in 12, uh, 18, 24, et cetera. All right, let's change it to mid-side mode now by clicking on this icon, and now we're in mid-side. So I'm going to reduce all these frequencies I just cut from the side of my mix. To do that, I turn this slider all the way up to 100% if I want to complete removal. Now, that's what's pretty crazy and cool about the Infinity EQ. You have full control over the amount of mid-side EQ you apply to each boost or cut. But I want to remove everything. <laughs> So I'm going to remove some of those. I, I want this to be kind of a brassy sound right here. So again, just removing some of the lows. Let's go to our flute here and uh, let's, let's actually just reinitialize this inf instance of the Infinity EQ. And what I'm going to do with this again, I'm going to look and see if we want to remove any frequencies. I actually want to boost some of the high end wind on this. So to do that, we're going to create create a little bit of a shelf here. Sure, we'll, we'll do a shelf for this. And again, I'm going to change the mode to side and we're going to boost just kind of the high end frequencies in the flute, just on the side or mainly on the side. I'm not going to go full 100%. Let's solo this band, see what we got. So pretty subtle, but I think it'll help it pop out in the mix a little bit.
All right, let's go down to one of the most important elements of this mix, the 808. Now, again, this is coming from Anna 2. Sounds like this. It is filthy. All right, so let's go load up the Infinity EQ again, and let's start to dial in our settings. All right, so I want to bring out a little bit of the tonality in this 808. So I'm going to create a curve right here, and I'm going to change the Q, basically. We want it to be more narrow. So I'm going to try to find like a maybe a second or third order harmonic that's pretty consistent in all the notes the 808's playing, which shouldn't be too hard because I'm not playing like a chord progression with this necessarily. All right, so there's a band that's pretty consistent. Let's solo this. Right, so that, that frequency right there is going to be kind of like, some people would call this maybe honk. So I'm gonna increase this a little bit. All right, so now that I quickly put the Infinity EQ all over this mix, let's take a listen to the last half of it. All right, so conventional YouTube logic would dictate that I spend the next 15 or 20 minutes slowly, painfully crescendoing into my opinion of Pro Q3 versus Infinity EQ. I'm gonna switch things up. Let's start at the end. Most of you guys will only watch three, four minutes of this video anyway, so let's start Let's start at the end. If you guys wanna stick around for a more detailed look, hang tight for that. So which one do I have? Well, it's a very hard comparison to make. I think if you're comparing the Infinity EQ to FabFilter Pro Q2, if you guys are still on that, I would go Infinity EQ. If you're comparing it to Pro Q3, it's more of a nuanced comparison. I think the Infinity EQ strong suit is its ease and speed of use. It's very easy to use. It's actually easier to use than Pro Q3. It's actually faster to use than Pro Q3 for basic EQ needs most of the time. But I'd say that Pro Q3 probably has overall more features, right? It is version three of an equalizer versus version one of the Infinity EQ and the Pro Q series has been around for over a decade. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna go over some of the features that Infinity EQ has that Pro Q3 does not, as well as some features I think are better or they're implemented more efficiently in the Infinity EQ. So to create a band or a curve here, we can just double click just like you can in the Pro Q series, right? That, that part of the workflow is the exact same, but outside of that, it starts to get a lot different. So FabFilter in the Pro Q series really pioneered this idea of being able to click on a band and control the amplitude of your cut or your boost and even the Q. But these floating boxes where you clicked on it, where you basically have access to a deeper level of control, that's something that FabFilter basically invented for EQs. Now, the Infinity EQ takes that idea and actually makes it more efficient. So in Pro Q, you have to click, move down, move up, click, move down. So Infinity EQ said, let's reduce the amount of clicks and move mouse movements you have to make to do basically the same thing. So we've created our shapes, double clicked, right? Now all I have to do is hover over the curve and I get all of the controls and then some that I get when I have to click and right click potentially in Pro Q3. So for instance, let's say in Pro Q3, I wanted to change the slope of this. I'd have to either right click here and select the slope, or I'd have to go down here and select the slope, right? So it's more mouse movement. Whereas in the Infinity Q, I actually have a variable slope filter. I have a slider and I can just go hover and change it. All right, because I mentioned the variable slope filter, it, a good time to explain what it is. So most EQs give you the option to choose 12 decibels per octave, maybe six, but they're always variables like six, 12, 24, 36, whatever it might be, like we see here in FabFilter Pro Q3. Whereas with Slate's Infinity EQ, it's a variable slate filter, so we can go anywhere from zero all the way up to 120 decibels per octave, which is gonna be a lot of fun to mess around with you know, doing automations and doing things like transitional noise sweeps, that sort of stuff. So let's go back to some of the other workflow enhancements. We also have the ability to lock uh, lock a band so then if you make a really precise surgical edit that you don't want to screw up you can just lock it you can actually group multiple bands together by clicking and highlighting and then hitting link 
And of course you can move them around now in tandem. I also think the way in which you can check out presets and surf presets is a little bit more efficient in the Infinity EQ. It pops up over to the side and you don't ever lose your place. And I also just like the presets. They're organized by genre, hip hop, lo-fi house, feature based, dubstep pop, rock, metal, mastering instruments and effects. I think that's a little bit easier to work with than all these you know, different high cuts, low cuts, all that sort of stuff. Um, and again, it's just nice that they're always there when you have that open. So let's start to talk about some of the features that Infinity EQ has that Pro Q3 does not. And some of them are really cool and really unique. For instance, Infinity EQ gives you three different modes. You have stereo, mid-side, and left and right. You have the same thing in uh, Pro Q3 as well. You have left and right, stereo, mid, and side, right? So it's, it separates them a little bit. Now, with the Infinity EQ, though, you can actually basically have variable states of left, right, or mid-side. So check this out. So if we go over this band and we click, we're now in mid-side. And if we hover back over this, I have this slider where I can take it from zero to 100%. Now I'm just boosting 100% of the side, but I can actually just boost 50% of the side, right? So that's something that I've never really seen in an EQ before. And if you go past 100, you're kind of in this weird uncharted territory where now I'm actually reducing <laughs> what's there in the mid range and boosting the size. So crazy stuff. I've never seen this in an EQ and you have that option for left and right as well. Q trumps the Pro Q3 is the way in which you can resize it. You can actually completely change the aspect ratio. You can go from like a square, short little stubby, ugly square rectangle to a long, you know, elongated rectangle and anything in between. It even has the full screen mode that the Pro Q3 does as well. Pro Q3 just has these presets for mini, small, medium, and large. Now, one of the main features that's missing is the dynamic EQ. In, in the Pro Q3 plugin, you can go to any band and make any band dynamic independently from the other bands. And then you can side chain into that. So it's great if you're trying to get like a kick and bass to sit together. Now, a couple of things, there's more shapes and curves in Pro Q3 than the Infinity Q. But the flip side of that for me is, okay, well, I probably don't use all 10 of these. I probably only use about four or five. And those four or five are pretty much here in the Infinity EQ. And we also have a couple other little features, some of which I find pretty useful. I really like this uh, keyboard down here at the bottom, which you can toggle on and off. But let's say I know like my kick or maybe my snare is at a certain frequency or certain pitch. Let's say it's at D. I can just go here, hit double click D, and now I've inserted a, a node or a point right at that note. Now, I also like the frequency sp spectrum hold. So you can see as I hover over different parts, different parts of the spectrum analyzer, that it actually will freeze it and will actually display the note value corresponding to what I'm hovering over, which is really nice. All right, so to finish up the video, my final thoughts, they're both great EQs. You can't really go wrong. I don't think one replaces the other by any means. They're, they're different enough. There's a different enough uh, feature set that they're just different products. It's apples to oranges, really. It's not apples to apples. Now, that being said, I do see myself using the Infinity EQ quite a lot, especially for the mid side. I love its mid side capability, but anytime, obviously, I need a dynamic EQ. Pro Q3 is my go-to. So hope this video helped you guys out. I hope it helped you know, provide some sort of clarity. If it didn't, post a comment or question below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And look out for Drip. It's coming soon. We're going to release it this weekend. If you guys have Anna too, you're definitely going to want this free sound set. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.